Hello again and welcome to my YouTube channel. I would like to thank everyone during the past year who watched my videos, specifically my last upload on COVID-19 vaccine, which is one of the most viewed videos that I make. It clearly shows that most of my patients or most people watching my videos are really hungry about what are the important points or facts regarding COVID-19. And it is for this reason that I thought of continuing this advocacy of mine and talking one more time about some of the important COVID-19 myths and facts which most of my patients are asking me about. And I think I can always say this, that these are some of the information that most diabetics should be aware of. And this is in line with one of my subscribers' question regarding the COVID-19 vaccines. And I thought of expanding it a little with the second video on some of the misinformation and misrepresentation uh, from other sectors regarding what they believe is in terms of management and treatment of COVID-19. So one of the informations that I want to appeal to everyone is to please beware of pseudoscience. If you look at social media nowadays, misinformation thrives in the internet. First, we know that there are a lot of information and myths regarding vaccination, even before COVID-19 vaccines came about. But what I want everyone to remember is that whether it's anti-vaxxers or supplement users, that pseudoscience are, making, take, are taking advantage of spreading misinformation and fear. It is very important that with the advent of vaccines soon to be available in our country, we have to remember that we have here a vaccine that can train our body to fight germs faster, and this may be our way out of this pandemic. It is also very important that lack of knowledge and half-truths normally undermine the evidence-based information that we actually seek these are informations that save lives, including vaccination. It is re one of the reasons why I made this YouTube channel to help propagate the right information on certain conditions that affect our lives. It is therefore very important that I appeal to everyone that please fact check the source before you share meaning if you are in doubt of the information that you're receiving from an unknown source, please do not send it out or share it in social media because a myth can become a fact to some and this will lead to misinformation. Here are some of the COVID-19 vaccines update that I want to share with you. In the first video, I talked about the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. Now, the AstraZeneca Oxford COVID-19 vaccine has been given an emergency use authorization in the UK, meaning it's a fast track approval pending more studies. But since this is an emergency use based on efficacy data, it has been shown to be proven to be efficacious and safe. The efficacy rate of the um, AstraZeneca vaccine is around 70%. Yes, it, it's in contrast to the 90 to 95% of Moderna and Pfizer, but I think this is the vaccine that will probably be suitable for our country, primarily because it's easy to store at minus at two to eight degrees centigrade, which is around the temperature that we get in a refrigerator. We don't need last freezers where there is minus 70 for Pfizer or minus around 20 for uh, the Moderna vaccines. As a result, the AstraZeneca vaccine is also cheap. In contrast to the $25 for Pfizer or Moderna, the Astra vaccine is only around $5, around 250 pesos. 
What's very important also based on preliminary studies from the AstraZeneca vaccine is that aside from the fact that it has a 70% efficacy, it was also shown to have 100% efficacy in preventing severe COVID-19 infection. And this is also very important from a healthcare standpoint because a severity of the disease and preventing it actually can result in a reduction in clinical outcome. So some important facts that I want to share with regard to COVID-19 vaccination, because a lot of myths are still surrounding that once you are vaccinated, you are actually protected completely. And unfortunately, it does not do so. Because once you are vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine, it may take typically a few weeks for the body to build immunity after the vaccination. So the Pfizer vaccine, for example, will only start working after the first dose of around 50%. But the efficacy rate of 95% was seen seven days after the second dose. Meaning, from the time you are given a vaccine, there is still a possibility that that person is going to be infected with the virus. And this is one of the news that came out recently that after Pfizer vaccination, a nurse got COVID-19. And the headline seemed to tell us that due to the vaccine, the patient got COVID-19. It's very important that the patient was not given enough time first for the vaccine to protect her. So it takes time for the body to develop immunity against the COVID-19 from the time we get the COVID-19 vaccine. So for the meantime that we are still awaiting the delivery of the vaccines to our country, what then can we do? There are a lot of misconceptions and myths again whether we can just use a face mask, whether we can just isolate ourselves, or we, can, or we don't need to use a face shield. Now, this is a clinical trial published in Lancet, which clearly looked at whether a distance of more than one meter or less than one meter do matter. And the data showed that it does, meaning a physical distance of more than one meter do result in large reduction in virus infection. Second, if you look at face mask versus without face mask, it clearly shows that medical or surgical face mask can result in a large reduction in virus infection. How about the face shield or eye protection? In this clinical trial, they looked at 13 unadjusted studies and showed that eye protection indeed can result in large reduction in virus infection. Clearly, therefore, if you look at the different interventions that we can do now before the vaccines to reduce transmission, whether you're using a mask, whether you're using a face shield, or you have physical distance, each parameter will give you around 80% reduction in transmission. But, if you use a face mask with a face shield, plus you do physical distance, you're going to get the best reduction in transmission. What if I have a PCR test and it's negative? Does it mean I don't have COVID and I'm free of COVID infection? And this is one other myth. I have to emphasize this, that there is no perfect test for COVID-19. Okay, let's look at the patient who is already day eight of COVID exposure. If you will note, day eight of COVID exposure or day three of, if you have symptoms, will give you the highest positivity rate for RT-PCR. Also, it will also give you the highest positive rate if you do an antigen test. At this time, the patient is contagious. Now, if you look at day 14 of your exposure, 
or around day 10, if you have symptoms or none, you will clearly see that your PCR is still positive. But your antibodies are now being developed in around 60 to 85% of cases. At this rate, the patient is no longer contagious, especially if the patient already is asymptomatic with no symptoms for the past three days. So there are some questions that one patient got positive, the other is negative, but they have the same symptoms. Why is this so? Because there's no test that can really tell you with 100% certainty that you do not or do have COVID-19. Not PCR, not an antigen, not an antibody. So there's no test that can say with 100% certainty that you do not have COVID-19. At best, the PCR can only detect 80% of infected persons, specifically on the third day of symptoms. What more if you test a patient without symptoms? It's usually worse than a coin toss, but you can never completely rule out the disease. Why? Because our tests are not good enough to do this. So this is one important fact that I want to spread out there. So what's the difference if a person is being quarantined or if a person is being isolated? So you quarantine a person who might have COVID-19 because that person was exposed to a known close contact. And we usually quarantine that person around 14 days. Testing whether you use RT-PCR or antigen cannot, again, cannot assure that someone is 100% COVID-free. This is one reason that it's very difficult for you to socialize with other people just because that person has an RT-PCR negative test. However, based on a negative test, if the person's risk that you are quarantined who are you, that is placed in quarantine is low enough, then we physicians can decide to shorten that quarantine period. In contrast, you isolate a person if your friend or your siblings are suspected with and with confirmed COVID-19. So we isolate them because we want to prevent them from infecting other people. It is very important, however, that majority of our patients are no longer infectious if they have been isolated for 10 days from the start of symptoms. Or if that patient you isolated is asymptomatic and that patient has already been isolated 10 days from the time their RT-PCR became positive. Patients, therefore, can also be released from isolation after 10 days from the start of symptoms, provided, here's a, a very important information, that these patients are no longer symptomatic, no symptoms of fever, for at least three days. For those asymptomatic, confirmed positive RT-PCR, they can be released from isolation after 10 days without the need for another repeat test. Okay, these are important facts. Furthermore, if you have a suspected, okay, there are some patients, we see patients, we really clinically suspect COVID-19, but the PCR test is negative. Now, here is what we do. These suspected COVID-19 patients even if their PCR is negative, but these patients have symptoms and these patients have known exposure, they should still be isolated for at least 10 days and only released after 10 days as long as three days without symptoms. Why do we do this? Because the test again 
aren't good enough to completely rule out COVID-19 in symptomatic patients. All symptomatic patients, therefore, with symptoms of fever and cough should be offered a test, specifically RT-PCR. If you have asymptomatic close contacts, these patients can be tested, but this should be done at least five days from the exposure, okay? Five days from the time they were exposed. This is where contract tracing is very important to minimize false negatives. So the bottom line is there are lots of facts and myths surrounding COVID-19 that I thought these are some of the important facts that I need to address and hopefully will help clear our patient's mind with regard to COVID-19. What we can do at the present time, if you're a diabetic, if you're overweight, if you have chronic illness, is let's help each other keep infection rate low by following the proven safety protocol. If we reduce the, re the infection rate and the number of persons being infected, we can also prevent the COVID-19 virus from mutating more. We know that COVID-19 vaccine is already in the horizon. It's coming in our country. It is already present in other countries and being given. And it is our hope for everyone to be able to hopefully go back to normalcy and feel safe again. The bottom line is my appeal to everyone with regard to COVID-19 information is to best source your information from a reputable organization or from a reputable institution and not to resort to quackery and methods without science. So the best defense, therefore, for COVID-19 spread is simply proper information dissemination. I hope I have convinced you that at the present time, while we still don't have the COVID-19 vaccine, the best protection against COVID-19 remains the face mask with a face shield and, of course, social distancing. So if you like my videos, please click subscribe and notification bell to be notified for more uh, new videos. And I would like to thank again all of you for watching this uh, new upload on COVID-19. If you have any more um, questions or topics that you'd like to ask me or to spread information to the rest of the um, country or in the world, Please feel free to email me or send me a message, and I'll be obliged. I'll feel obliged to help you with regard to making these new videos for all of you. Again, thank you very much, and hope you can click on some of the links that I provided here for more of the videos that we have uploaded in the past. Again, happy new year, and thank you for listening.